today we're going to be looking at this ah this ssd which is supposed to be as sharp as a blade on the front of the box you can see the ssd as well as the heat sink it tells you it's the xpg gamix or gamix s70 blade it tells you the physical size and a few other bits of information as well as information about it being compatible with a ps5 on the back of the box you've got a qr code you can scan for more details otherwise the writing on that is very hard to read it's sort of metallic white writing on a metallic red background which can make it very hard to see especially with certain lights it does say the read speed on there the read speed is up to 7400 megabytes per second the write is up to 6800 megabytes per second but there is a big star next to that which means not all is the seams so inside the box you've got a plastic tray in that plastic tray you've got the ssd itself as well as the optional heat sink okay let's have a look at the heat sink it's pretty straightforward it's got a little strip what you peel off and then you just attach that to the top of the ssd believe it or not these can reduce the heat or the temperature of the ssd sometimes by up to two digits so like 10 or 12 degrees in most cases probably about five or six degrees but they're always beneficial if you haven't got a built-in heatsink on your motherboard. The SSD looks like, well, most normal SSDs in all honesty, or at least M.2 NVMe type ones. You've got a sticker on the bottom with the specifications, and then on the top you've got your two memory chips as well as controllers and so forth on there, which is pretty straightforward. Okay, let's quickly go through specifications. This is the XPG Gamex S70 Blade. It is a PCI Gen 4x4 SSD. So that means if you're putting it in an NVMe slot, which is only Gen 3, it will go at a lot slower speeds, possibly 3,000 megabytes per second. So just bear that in mind. Now there's four capacities available. You've got 512 gig, one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte. It will work on a PS5, but bear in mind, if you're using it on a PS5, it will be limited on read speeds of up to 6,100 megabytes per second. That's usually the limitation of the PS5 rather than the SSD itself. You've got 4K random read and writes of 750K and so forth. Operating temperature is 0 to 70. Storage temperature is minus 40 up to 85. And you've got a few other bits in there. Uh, it's also got a five-year warranty on there as well, and it's 3D NAND on there. Now, the write speeds and the read speeds, this is where there's a big star on the back of the box. That's if you can actually read it because it's that small. Now, on all of the drives, you are able, at least according to their performance charts, to get up to 7,400 megabytes per second on the read. But it's the write what suffers. So let's just say you've got the four terabyte drive, depending on what software you're using to test it on let's just go by uh, crystal disk mark for example you should get 6600 megabytes per second so it's actually a little bit slower than quoted if you go down to the two terabyte version you'll get 6800 which is what they've quoted on the box now down from there it goes downhill drastically so for a one terabyte drive instead of 6800 megabytes per second you're only getting 5500 and if you've got a 512 gigabyte one, you only get 2,600 megabytes on the actual write speed. So that's actually a lot slower than a lot of um, Gen 3 SSDs. So just bear that in mind. If you go for the smaller drives or even the slightly bigger drive, uh, then you're not getting the optimal speeds. The two terabyte version is the most optimal one according to their charts. Software you can download for this drive is the ADATA SSD toolbox. Um, once you've installed it, it will show you all your drives in the machine. For example, this machine is showing a few. You've got Seagate Fire CUDA there. We've got the XPG Gamix S20 uh, Blade or Game Max or Game Mix or however you want to pronounce it. Tells you information about that, including firm, firmware numbers, serial numbers, total write bytes written, and so forth, even temperatures and remaining life, and if it's in good health or not. It does have smart details as well. You can click on smart or drive details, and it'll pop up, as you can see there, uh, with lots of information about the drive. So that's totally up to you if you use that. You've got a diagnostic scan as well. You can do a quick and full one if you think you're having issues or you just want to make sure everything's okay. Utilities, you've got a secure arrays there, so you can basically do a full secure arrays. 
you got firmware updates, tool, toolbox ups, uh, upgrade and export logs as well if you wanted. And you even got a system optimizer there. So this function performs a trim command on the selected SSD, may take several minutes, blah, 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 blah. But basically it should hopefully uh, give you a little bit more performance on the actual drive. Some people like um, using trim commands, some don't. But it's really up to you to be honest with you. And then it gives you more system information as well on that, which gives you ideas uh, what system we're using it on. For example, we're using it on a Fred Ripper, 64 gig of RAM and so forth. Uh, you've got user manual and link to uh, register as well on that. So that's the software. Now onto the testing. Down to testing, we're testing this drive as a slave drive. It's had nothing put on it or anything like that. It's a straight formatted, so it should be exactly like it is out of the box. When we say it's a slave drive, that means it doesn't have an operating system on. So we're using it as, for example, the D drive. Um, so you'd usually uh, use that then to put games on or documents and stuff and keep it separate to your operating system. Our testing is just finished we've used two programs we use crystal disk mark as well as atto to do the testing we'll start with atto first and as you can see with atto here the speeds went up to around about seven gigabytes per second that's seven thousand megabytes per second and on the right speed just a fraction slower uh, at six gigabytes per second so that's pretty good so six thousand megabytes per second that's actually faster then they quote for this size drive. This is a one terabyte drive, and I think it says it goes up to 5,500. And according to this, you're getting nearly 6,000. Now, testing with Crystal Disk Mark, we always find there is a difference between Atto and Crystal Disk Mark. No matter what machine we do it on, there's usually between four and 500 megabytes per second read and write difference. So using Crystal Disk Mark, it's saying we're getting seven. 1,479 megabytes per second. So that's actually faster than what's quoted on the box and on their website. And the same on the right, we're getting 6,275. So nearly 6,300 megabytes on the right. Again, higher than specified for this size. And all the other test results, as you can see here, look pretty good. Temperature wise, we've found that it runs pretty cool, to be honest with you. The controller, which seems very cool for a controller if that is going to be the um, controller is 39 degrees celsius where the rest of the testing is saying it get, went up to 53 degrees celsius again it's in actually quite a high airflow case so if you have got it in somewhere like a place where it's hiding underneath your graphics card and not a lot of airflow it could potentially get hotter usually one thing we find with ssds if they get to over 80 degrees celsius especially 85 you will find that they can slow down so sometimes quite drastically now what we're going to do just to see what the real time performance is i'm going to copy this folder here called arctic 2 it's basically got um a couple of videos what we've edited and obviously reviewed and so forth so it's got 4k videos in there it's got hd videos in there it's got text documents pdfs pictures and audio files in there as well uh lots of different variations there's 73 files in total 11 folders and it's 18.4 gigabytes obviously you will never get the maximum read and write speeds on drives like this unfortunately uh, when you are copying stuff because different size files copy at different speeds so if i just copy that arctic 2 folder onto the drive and we'll just see what the actual real-time read write is so this is writing onto the drive and as you can see here you're getting around about 1.6 1.7 gigabits per second reaching up to 1.85 at the end so that was actually pretty quick and a little bit faster than what i thought i was expecting about 1.5 so still that is pretty good so what i'm going to do now is just rename this file and copy it back so we'll call it arctic 22 for example that way it doesn't cause any issues with the caching and so forth so if we paste that back onto the c drive which bear in mind we're using a lexar nm800 which is a similar uh, speed drive so there shouldn't be any issues with copy and paste times we're going to paste that back so this is going to be what you class as the read because it's reading from the d drive which is the uh, drive from a data or xpg depending on what you want to call it um, and it's writing onto the lexar drive okay and this is the sort of speed you're getting so we're getting 1.87 1.85 1.9 so not far off two gigabits per second 
uh, or gigabytes per second, which is pretty good. Um, so I don't have any problems with that. It's performed exactly as it should. We're getting faster speeds, specifically on the right speeds, and it quotes on the website for this size of drive. So I can't do anything but really highly recommend this product. I hope you enjoyed that review. I know I did. If you'd like to see more SSD reviews we've reviewed in the past, then click this box just here. Yeah, that box just right here. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. You know the drill. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.